Okay, so um, Mastermind is all about sharing. So this is your time, guys, in the, in the beginning, just to share. Share what's winning, what's working, um, appointments you've had in these last few weeks, anything that's come to mind that you've found that's it's really um, effectively happening on the follow-up. Marcus, I finally have one under contract from Street Text, a buyer at 300 and I think 80,000. Our market average is 369. So we're very happy about that new construction. One of the easiest deals I've ever done. Showed them one home, set them up a search. They made an offer on new construction. We're done. Didn't even want me there when they were signing the contract. So we've already given them your name. They've got everything they need and they're going to handle it. That's excellent mailbox money there. What? You went really fast there. Break, break it a little down a little bit faster there. So where did it all begin? What ad? Um, how did it all work? Follow this up. Was, this was my custom ad that I'm running for ranch homes. And it says, are you tired of overused steps and underused rooms? Because I hear that from people who are downsizing all the time. So I put that into the ad for the list of ranch homes. So far, as of today, I have a grand total, I think, of 100 and almost 70 leads that have come in off that ad. We've already converted one. I've got, I think, 20 tagged as hot right now who are ready to buy in as soon as they can find the place they're looking for. So very pleased. I took them out to see one home. Then I uh, had them on the search. They went and looked at new construction. Uh, that they'd requested to see from me that I got them all the details on. They said, let us drive the neighborhood on our own. They went over there and drove the neighborhood, stopped at the sales office, ended up putting our name down, and they ended up signing a contract that day while we were not even there. So we literally showed them one home and have one under contract at just under 400000 What was that phrase you said, overused? What was it again? It's the, the verbiage that I put in there, because I hear this all the time. Are you tired of, if you look at it, are you tired of unused rooms and overused stairs? Because we hear that from so many seniors. I'm tired of cleaning rooms that are no longer being used, and we're tired of climbing up and down the steps. So I'm trying to hit their pain point to make them respond. And I am specifically looking for right size, what we used to call move down buyers who will have a double-sided deal. Now, this couple, unfortunately, had already sold six months ago and were living in temporary housing. So I missed the first half of the transaction, but it was there. I just wasn't early enough. Did you come up with that all by yourself? I came up with that one all by myself. Awesome. No help from Logan on that one. Well, y'all are welcome to take it. If you want to put it into a template and, and put together a smart plan with it, a drip, I'm fine with that. Like I said, y'all can take it and put it in there. I, I think in today's market, it's something that has long legs that will work for the foreseeable future with the number of, of uh, Generation Xers that we've got that are moving down. I'm going to put that you, you little notice he You notice he's identified a niche, knock, knock. Yep. Can I ask where you're located? I am in Atlanta, Georgia. There you go. I just put it there in the that chat feature there for you guys. Are you tired of unused rooms and overused stairs? That's a great idea. I mean, you can kind of use that as an example of what you, what you can accomplish on the lead ad. That's a really good idea. It'd be really helpful if Facebook would allow you to search 55 plus, you know, for the age restricted communities, but whatever, I guess they don't do that anymore, but that's awesome. No, but you know what? That's why you split test, right? You split test that ad and idea concept because in the beginning, in that 24 to 40 hour period, you're trying to, to get that type of profile to be the lookalike audience that it's created. So if you get 55 plus people clicking on it within that first 24 to 40 hours, it'll it'll continue to find more people like it. Yeah, that's a good idea. He gave me an idea. Got a bum hip? <laughs> Let's get Oh my God, that would be rad. Do it. <laughs> well, well, to be fair, Facebook users are getting older. So right? the generation doesn't associate with Facebook so much. That's what my kids say. I'm old. Or I'm on Facebook because I'm old. 
So Campbell, quick question. Did you split test that or just run a single ad to get the results on that one? I did a triple split like they recommend. And then I pared it down within 48 hours to the one that was getting the best uh, leads. Marcus, you can go straight to my account and show it to them. We're yeah. getting them right now. The cost has gone up over the last seven days, but we're still below $3 and I'm happy with that. And you can see the ones down below of the, I'm seeing that turned I'm, off. I'm thinking it might be time for you to turn off that what's your home really worth ad, but that's up to you. I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to up my buyer budget is what I'm thinking too. I, I, I'm just not getting the traction I want from the seller leads. I'm getting way more traction from the buyer leads. And I know Jonky is running nothing but buyer leads with you guys. And it's very happy with the double side she's getting. Yeah, you got to try it. You got to test the market. But yeah, I mean, so that's the key. You always judge your last seven days to the full lifetime of that. And if it's getting skewed like $34 yeah. per email... Here, I'll do you a favor. I'll turn it off for me, buddy. Thanks, sir. Oh, it looks like you already did because I can't turn it off. But I I'll um, turn it off on mine and I'll make sure. But yeah, you can see how you split test that because there's a twelve dollar lead on that one. There's a so you had a you had a three dollar lead, so you kept that one on for a while. And then you you ended up with this two dollar and seventy cent phone number with this. It's gone in again and said I don't have permission to turn off my own ads. I hate Facebook with a bloody passion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're getting deals from them, so it's necessary. Well, I so, first of all, um, I just love these masterminds. It's a it's a nice shot in the arm every single week that I'm on these because um, I work for myself. So being on this with a bunch of other folks throughout the country is nice. Um, it's just great. It's a nice charge. Um, I will say that. You know, I also turned off all the seller lead ads and I'm focusing on buyer lead ads. I'm going to try the one that Campbell was just talking about, but um, I'm just finding it again, folks um, are putting in more real phone numbers. Um, I just had a call to, I have, so far I have one appointment I already have. The guy's getting pre-approved for about $300,000 and I have an, a, a coffee appointment next week with a buyer who I already did some research on him. You know, he owns a bunch of homes in the multi-million dollar mark, wants to downsize. I uh, was looking to spend two and a half million, has another million and a half dollar home to sell. And I just, it was speed the lead. I called him right away after the lead came in. And um, sometimes my opening is just, hey, I know I'm kind of an interruption to your day. I kind of giggle about it. And this has worked a number of times. I just say, can I borrow 27 seconds of your time to tell you why I called? Then I go into it a little bit and it's like, oh yeah, I just did that. Wow, that was fast. And then you just, I don't know, there's something about humor. There's something about lightheartedness. Um, I followed up with some emails, some voicemails, with video, bomb bomb video. And um, I also did, when he asked me to go take a look at a home that he saw in a coming soon that comes from my MLS, I went and shot a video for him because he was in Maui. Um, and then it just, you know, the relationship involved, evolved. I haven't met him yet in person, um, but we're going to meet for coffee next week when he's back in town about what his real estate plans are to downsize. So, you know, all that to say is testing what works, what doesn't work. Um, speed to lead always still works for me. If I don't get him on the phone, I do do what somebody else suggested, which is, hey, is this so-and-so in a text? I've got a couple of responses. Uh, yes, it is. No, it's not. And who are you? Um, but I think that again, the, the personal touch, the personality piece of it, um, has been, has been working and now it's just a matter of staying consistent within that process. Hey guys, I'm, uh, I've only been licensed, uh, two months and this is my first mastermind. Uh, can you, what do you mean, Joe, when you say speed to lead, do you mean get them on the phone right away? That's always been my, when I started in this business back in 2005, um, I started with, you know, doing SEO stuff. And yeah, it was, as soon as a phone number comes or a lead comes in with a phone number, call it, call it. Cause you have, a, you know, a couple of choices, either a, they're going to go to somebody else or B you'll get, they'll get you on the phone or you'll get them on the phone. and be like, wow, that was fast. That was pretty cool. So the mindset is already there that you're responsive. 
as, as far as I'm concerned. That's the, 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 and you have them on the phone. They're impressed that you call because don't forget, a lot, the perception is agents don't call. Agents don't return phone calls. Agents don't follow up. So as long as you start that from the get-go, at least my experience, is it sets the tone um, in a positive light. So yeah, speedily, that's what I mean. Typically with, from what I read, within five minutes of getting a lead. Awesome. Anybody want to add to that? This is just a time to share. Great share so far. Um, yeah, this is time I'll, to share piggyback that. I'll, I'll piggyback that. This is where I, you know, they, they call it surfing the internet for a reason. And if you sit here and think you're the only page they stopped on, you're crazy. So when, when Joe says he hits them right away, if you're hitting them right away, chances are they, they, you were first, middle, or last. They're still doing something. So like Marcus always talks about the interruptions for, for Facebook interruptions. Well, it, this is the better interruption because now you're going straight to the source. And, you know, you can't be, I won't say you can't. Whether you send them a text or call, don't email because they probably ain't going to open it. But you need to get a more direct line right out to them right away to initiate it. And, and it comes down to the end of the day. You can't always hide behind a text or you can't hide behind an email. You can't hide behind the, the camera. People that say they're camera shy, I don't want to be seen. You're going to meet these folks eventually. So what are you hiding? You know, we always say everybody's like relationship-based business. Um, with, with Joe, when I'm driving, same thing. I will hit a text right away, kind of let them know what it is. Ask is a good time to talk. If they're really busy blowing up, call them. But, you know, you're, you're in as a business. You have to be proactive and make this happen. I, I like what you said, uh, Leon, about be seen. So be seen as in be you, be yourself. Because at the end of the day, um, it's a relationship. And I have to remember that. I had anxiety about you know picking up the phone because I would usually catastrophize it. They're going to pick up the phone. They're going to tell me to F off. Stop bugging me. I already got a couple of those. But at the end of the day, what's the worst that can happen? Nothing other than they say, don't call me. You want a positive about a negative? I'm gonna give you one. If they tell you F off this, that, whatever, guess what? You have no more time wasted on them. Your time is worth something. So if they're really that bad, you kick them to the curb and you press on. Go find someone that needs you. I would rather have one, two, three leads that talk to me than 10 I'm wasting my time on that don't. Because when you look at how much time you have wrapped up in them, you could have been more productive in other ways. And so, um, you know, I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, don't beg anybody to take your money. Your time is money. If they don't want you, move on. Can Play I maybe jump one. in here Thank and you. get a get a feedback on that? Because I'm of that mindset also. When I get a, a very negative response, I, I'm a deleter. I, I'm, I don't waste a bunch with a with a drip line and a whole bunch of extra conversation. I delete your ass, I delete your butt very quickly and I move on. I, I'd like to have some feedback on if anybody else is hanging on to what I feel are waste of time, dead leads. Well, I, I do do that because I you know I I I um. I play the tape forward, we'll call it, which is if this is what you're going to be like when you initially interact with a person who's a stranger, what are you going to be like throughout the rest of the process if we choose to work together? And the question is, why am I taking that business? And it's typically in my experience, I will take that kind of business because I have nothing else going on. And I'm taking that business out of fear as opposed to, you know, there's lack in abundance. Getting rid of people that are gonna waste your time and energy um, is living in lack. There are plenty of people out there that wanna connect, that are nice, that want to work with somebody who is, you know, polite, reaches out, communicates, is proactive. Those are the ones that I wanna work with. And I have to remind myself that too, because I'm sitting there sometimes going, I have nothing going on, therefore I got to take this. Well, no, because they will drain your freaking energy. Guys, there's, I'll something to be, there's something to be said about mental energy. And I think that's something that's, again, often overlooked is, you know, surrounding yourself with, you know, positivity and, and positive energy really does help your, your mental state long term. And, you know, a five minute conversation where you're getting screamed and yelled at by somebody 
it's more than five minutes. That five minutes does multiply because, you know, 20 minutes later, you're sitting there going like, what a jerk that guy was, right? Like, so it's the same thing. And, and taking it back to Thomas's first question of what is speed to lead? Speed to lead is basically the first piece of communication being sent to an individual as soon as humanly possible, which, you know, it, it's, it's obvious that needs to happen. But at the same time, what often over is overlooked, and I try to make sure we explain this to everybody, is quality of content. Make sure that your first touch on these individuals is appropriate, it's personable, and it doesn't just rub them the wrong way because then your next conversation with them is, oh, I'm just talking to another one of these people, one of these you know, used car sales people because your first pieces of communication didn't set you apart. If you have a good personal response, you know, semi-personal response, we'll call it because it's an automation fair. But if you've put your best foot forward and you've shown them, Hey, I'm a real person with, you know, feelings and emotions, but more importantly, I'm here to help you. I'm a real person. And if you've conveyed that message to them appropriately, and then your first conversation with them is one of, you know, hatred or whatever it might be, then absolutely. Peace out. See you later. We, we just don't need that in our day. But again, you do need to take it back to the beginning and see what have I supplied them so far? Do they know that I'm different than all these other agents that they're really screaming and yelling at? Because in that moment, they're not screaming and yelling at you. They don't know you. They don't know who you are. They're screaming at the last interaction they had. They're screaming at the 20 emails they've been sent from all these other agents who are just trying to get their business. So again, it comes back to speed to lead and quality of content. Make sure that your first touches with these individuals is appropriate. It's what you wanted to lead with in terms of a best foot forward. And so long as you've done that, hey, great. Now it's on them. And if they treat you with, you know, that kind of vitriol, as, as we like to say, then see you later, delete them and move on. Absolutely. Guys, I'll, I'll add something to this conversation. One of the things that we always have to remember is how did a lead come into our system? What was the original reason for them reaching out? And when you're looking at people on Facebook, you have to consider what part of the funnel that they're in. The people who are ready to buy now want to have more interaction with you. The ones who are further out, it's kind of like when you and I go to the store, when we're looking for a TV, we walk through the front door, the first salesperson hits you and goes, what can I help you with? You go, no, I'm just looking. You're actually there looking for something, but you're not ready to interact with them. Now, I'm going to echo on what Leon said. If they're an ass, I will not continue talking to them, but what I will do, if they're a buyer lead, I will continue sending them homes to look at, and when they're ready and I see them active on the website, I will talk to them. I've had leads that have been on my website for five years who I've sold a home to because they weren't ready five years ago, but when I saw they got active, I reached back out to them, and the response I got then was totally different. So I, I think we always have to remember that they're in control. We do what we can. We reach out as fast as we can. And the ones who want help will identify themselves. The others, I'm never going to cut and run. I'll continue to send them either a market report if they're a seller, or I will send them homes for them to look at. I won't hammer them every day. I may only do it a couple of times a week. And then they show up in my activity feed on my Chime CRM. And when I see they're active, that's when I reach out. And that's how I nurture them. I agree with what you said, Logan. We, we can't over send stuff to them. Otherwise, we wear out our welcome. But if we reach out every once in a while and they keep seeing us, there are a lot of them that will convert three to five years. And I know it's happened for us. I can't even count the number of leads we've converted five years later. Emma win. <laughs> I got a listing appointment for Monday from a What's Your Home Really Worth ad. So they are still working, although this was four months ago. But um, yep, uh, we actually just sent them out um, from Curtis, my girl from Curtis's um, company. She sent a whole bunch of these little emails out uh, that just... Um, basically said, hi there. I just want to touch base with you about the estimate I sent out. The market is crazy active right now, and we are getting multiple offers for almost every house we have listed this year and um, have sold most over asking price. Just out of curiosity, do you have an I'd be crazy not to sell price in mind? Let me know. I'd love to see how I can help you get it. Thanks. That's, that's what was sent out. And I got several responses and a listing appointment and they want to buy. So that's a good win. 
That's amazing. That's a great script. Would you share that script, Wendy? Would you do a copy paste? Yeah, I'm doing that right now. Thank you. But yeah, and I kind of freaked out when she did it because I don't want to go to Google jail. I didn't know how many she sent out, you know, and I've already been doing my own email stuff with the Raider calendars. So I was kind of, yeah, but anyway, Raiders. it was fine. She kept it under, she, I know, Raiders. Uh, she kept it under 300. So we were good there and we have a new plan now. So, but I think it's a good plan to, you know, get that then out. Um, it sparked a lot of conversations and um and then a pretty good one so that's awesome uh, kim sure i have a listing appointment on friday for 50 acres um same thing with curtis, 50 curtis acres? oh tell me more. and go tell chiefs me more. tell me more about that 50 acres right what do you mean what i mean so how did it go what was the ad at, what did it how, what's the conversation um i'm not sure which ad it came in from because i have like two or three running yeah. But it's a what's your home worth ad, I'm sure, like the Blue House one with a map for um, the coastal line here. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's vacant land. And I've sold a bunch of acreage out there before. So it was kind of cool. She, she, her voicemail was full. So he said, she, she wants to talk to you about this. And so um, I looked her up on Facebook and we have 25 friends that are mutual. And then, so I friended her. And I saw she was a horse person, so that's my jam. And so I messaged her because her voicemail was full. And then I sent her a picture of me on my horse. Ah, she, oh. Love, 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 love it. Do you guys pick that up right there? Because a lot of people don't go back and search on Facebook, see if there's mutual friends, uh, social profile them. Because you don't always, the street text lead doesn't always come in that way. It's, it's all to do with the public information that's shared via the email they're using when they submit their information. So if you don't find it, you gotta do your, your quick advanced search on Facebook. And then if you can find them and create that connection, that's it, that's the end game. If you can make that connection there on Facebook, that's my preferred method. Everybody knows we call it Facebook stalking, but it's, it's not if it's a genuine connection. Mm -hmm. I was channeling my inner Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and again, and when, when we're all talking about that speed to lead component, well, if you know that first speed to lead portion of this is going to be them going back to their email, especially if it's the home value lead, because um, sometimes it's all you got is an address and email. That is your first impression. And, you know, Wendy was, was the beginning person who ever did the, you know, hey, check out my personal Facebook. Here's my personal link. So they get to see her as a real person and connect that way rather than, you know, book into my calendar and I'll review your home value. You know what I mean? It's like, don't be that person. Be the person that begins with that no like trust model, get to know me first, see what you, you know, like me, and then we can develop a trust relationship. Another cool idea I do every year for Halloween is put my business card, double sticky tape on M&Ms because parents, look at their kids candy right well they should i'm really hoping they should so i just got 250 little m&ms with my business card on them now i'm ready for halloween and i'm ready to scare everybody this is brilliant hey, Marcus, i'll show her when if you guys can hear can you guys hear me yeah uh -huh. um so i actually did a live session about this on monday but i launched a new um Campaign test on Saturday, not an ideal to, day to launch a new campaign, but whatever, uh, better better now than never. Um, and already uh, had a lead, had several leads come in. One came in on Sunday, scheduled a time on my calendar for uh, Monday morning. And they are, uh, they have a house that's uh, between four and 500,000 to sell, which is about double my average home price and uh, want to buy one in the 600 to $1 million range. And um, yeah, that was, that was all, uh, all I did was set it up, put some, some uh, smart automation kind of stuff in place and um, called him at nine 15 in the morning. Cause that's the time he asked me to call him. Perfect. 
What was the ad, Josh? So it was, um, I, I launched two different tests, same, same concept, but two different approaches. Um, but it was around luxury. So the, um, the one, the one I took the, um, the buyer, I forget, I always forget what it's called, but what's the buyer one where you get a free list of X homes in X area. Um, yeah, the buyer lead. Buyer lead ad. Okay, so so it was uh, get a free list of all uh, luxury homes available right now in Cumberland County. That was one approach. The other approach, again, same concept, is um, get a free luxury home price report for Cumberland County, or or get your get your free fall twenty twenty one Cumberland County luxury home price report. Um, and I'm kind of pitting them against each other. I did uh, three, a three ad split test of both. Um, and I still have several of each of them on because they were both working great. And, um, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna turn stuff off that's working. Um, the other thing I would say, uh, or I, I guess just another thought of, around that is um, when you launch a new, like I always try and look at, not making any assumptions until you've gotten at least a hundred leads from a campaign, right? Cause the numbers can be crazy. Like that came off the first, I don't know. He was like the seventh lead through the thing, but that's not normal. Like that's not, I, if I'm, if I'm to assume that every seven leads or I'm going to have somebody schedule a call and want to have, you know, a million plus in volume, you know, that that's not, that's not a realistic expectation. Um, but if you look at it over a hundred, then you can start to make some some real sort of uh, um, you know a, you you can make some 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 t have some true takeaways, right? Like okay, this this is working, it's not working, or maybe I need to change this or that or the other thing. Josh, how many leads have you gotten from that luxury ad? I'm really curious about that. Um, so I have several going right now. Give me a second here. It's it's in the twenties. Um, and I launched, um, I launched it on, uh, Saturday morning. What cost I'll, I'll give you an exact, you that? what's that? What cost per lead are you getting? Uh, about eight lead? bucks, about eight bucks a lead. I'm in a rural area. Um, which tells me that in, in higher priced markets or more competitive markets, obviously your cost per lead would be, would likely be higher than mine. Um, but I'm at, I'm at about eight bucks a lead. Marcus, can you show us that ad from him? Yeah, or Josh, you're welcome to share it too. Um, all right, so I'm, on, I'm not on my normal device uh, and I'm not logged into, hold on, I can- um, I can pull it up too if you'd like. It, that might be easier. Um, just because I'm not on my normal device and I don't have, I'm not logged into Facebook on this device and it would, I don't know. It'll it'll take a while. I can switch devices too if that's oh, no easy. Like, in the meantime, keep chatting up. I'll just go search for it. Yeah. So the other thing I, that I I thought of during the conversation that was happening when I first got on, I was a little late. Is um, I'll throw out there uh, whether we do it on a mastermind or whatever. Um, and some retargeting strategies. Um, I'd be happy to dig into that. So with this campaign. Everybody who clicks on the any of the lead ads in the campaign, they immediately get it put into an audience and we'll see a video on Instagram or Facebook. So I'm like, I'm taking it even to another channel of doing everything possible to for them to get to see my face and make a connection with me um, as quickly as possible. Now, I have to do that directly in the Facebook uh, manager. You know, that's not something that's that's native to the street text platform currently, but it's it's worth figuring out, um, you know, for the the ability to connect on, on an even deeper level or, Gosh, or with more of find out more about that. I would love to see if you could do a, a, a seminar on that at some point in time. That would be very intriguing, especially with those luxury leads, because that's a market that's worth following up on and spending more money. No doubt about it. For sure. Yeah little hiccup we can't access that right now for this quick second but as soon as we will it's probably because i edited it i i'm hacking the system a little bit here i'll i'll uh, i'll hop on we can continue the batter yeah, no i'll no hop on on my other device and i'll bring it up then because i don't i don't want to leave people hanging 
Did somebody well, give it. me an idea of what sort of like what's their success rate for converting leads? Like I'm so new, I've literally received only 44 contacts since I started. So um, oh, that's a tough one to answer. <laughs> yeah, like on average, you you get 100 leads or 200 leads or a thousand leads. Like what number might turn into a real client? Well, that's subjective to follow up, right? And the and the way you follow up and how how you create a, a an experience that's feels very much authentic and as you as a consultant rather than a salesperson. So yeah. it almost begins with taking a step back at times. And I did a I did a conversion workshop on this yesterday. You almost want to think about reverse engineering the process. You always want to take a, a time and spend and think about the automations that are going to go out. Think about the systems you're going to use. Think about the integrations, you know, like HomeBot and, and so forth. Um, and then, you know, look at the drip email campaign itself and say, OK, now I'm going to go in there and start making it my own. And that includes your SMS feature, um, because if you don't, then a lot of the stuff gets lost in translation and translation. Ultimately, for me, what I've seen leads to people, you know, not doing much with those emails, unsubscribing, you know, throwing some I was just curious type of stuff at you. Um, but the more you sit in. I think someone's coming on. The more you sit back and customize that and think about that experience, it becomes awesome. I know Linnea is here and she can attest to that. Um, Kim and a lot of you guys that have spent some time on, on customizing those automations, that's a good place to start, especially in the first few weeks. You do not give them the mistake um, or the, the ability to interpret even the, the, the IE updates text that kind of sends out as Julie. That in itself is a opportunity to make it more your personality. Um, yeah, and yeah something, I, I something on that. that just is make sure that like when as you're writing it, you're writing it with a posture of give. And we talk about this a lot, like coming from contribution, you're serving, you're coming from there. But there's a really big reason for this. And so uh, I was so I was at that conference last week. It was awesome. Uh, but there were two people that I encountered out of the whole event that. I could tell right away, like as we were talking, it was like it was like bumping into a wall. I was like, I was like, their their headspace wasn't quite right. So I was wondering why. And as the 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 you know the conference events going on, I started to pick it up. They kept starting the approach by, "What am I getting from this? What am I getting from this?" And it seems like when the mentality is with like giving and service, it just seems to create that abundance that Joe was talking about earlier. You, you, you just, you kind of, it, it opens everything up. It opens up to conversation. And so when you're crafting the message, um, flip the script from, okay, I want to book an appointment to what does the person who submitted this inquiry, what are they looking for? Why did, what was their intent behind it? If they were curious about a home value, do, if I'm on their, their end receiving this, am I feeling like I'm getting closer to the answer that I was seeking. You know, it, is it going from their perspective? So as you go and you personalize it, audit those personalizations, just check, make sure like, is the language that I'm using, am I, have I, have I updated the text in such a way that if anything, it's only like, I'm, I'm actually communicating the contribution. I'm communicating that this is a value that I'm serving my community in this way. I'm doing it free of charge, no obligation. And because of the fact that I feel this is a benefit to uh, to people who are, who are needing my services. So I think that's really key. And you'll probably find that you will, um, if you just change a few things in, in, in the, the messaging coming from the contribution that you'll see a 10 X on the response rate, because people right away are going to say, Oh, this person, this is the kind of person I want to talk with. And when they find you on Facebook or you friend to connect them, it's going to be congruent. It's going to say, Oh, this is, you know, this is, this is Eric East. I see he's, he's helping, uh, you know, I saw you do the whole post. I'm like, you obviously um, are a translator. So you're gonna be helping people who are coming from Afghanistan and communicate with them. I read that, I saw that post. I was like, that's awesome. It's congruent. It's like you're coming from that place of service. Wendy, you know, you're know, you digging potholes, like literally filling potholes in this back roads. And I was like, that's awesome. It's congruent. This is the kind of person that I would love to uh, work with. And I think that's that's really, it's good. I see Linnea's got her hand up. So it's all yours. Fantastic, thanks. Go ahead, Lena. I was just gonna 
uh, tack onto that with that. Like, I think the most important thing with the automations is making sure it's in your voice. Um, because I'll tell you, like, even if like people respond, people respond to me all the time. Now I like probably two, three times a week, I'm getting a response where someone has a question about their market. Um, someone the other day was like, I'm really sorry. We just decided not to sell our house, but we, you know, we still want to talk to you. And so like, I've never talked to them, but they, the, like they know me, like they, they just know me. And so I think that like making sure that those auto they take, I would strongly recommend spending some time in the funnels and making sure those, those emails and those text messages are in your voice because you, the return might not happen that quickly, but you know, I, anyone who knows me knows that I'm all about long-term nurturing. I'm not about the immediate. And so that's what the automations will do for you is really get that long-term nurturing in there. Perfect. Well said. And by the way, there is a new automations workshop Ira hosts, and we parlay that with the conversion workshop every week. So between the automations and the conversion workshop, those are two additional times, even outside this mastermind, you can come and join and we can work on those together. Okay, Josh said he has his ads pulled up while we're here if we want to look at them. And oh, I, I just want one, uh, one little tip uh, on to piggyback on what Linnea said is read your um, automations, your scripts, whatever, read them out loud, read them out loud. And if it doesn't sound like you, like then, then make them sound like you, you know what I mean? Like if, it, if they don't, if they don't come out naturally, like if you have to think about what you're reading, then it's not your voice, right? It's not, you, you've got to make it like the way I talk is drastically different than, you know, many of you on here. Like, and so when it, it, it's, it's, it's as little as simple things like, having I will instead of I'll like, I don't ever say I will text you tomorrow. No, I'll, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Like, or I'll, I'll shoot you a text tomorrow. Right. So craft them the way you speak or, or edit them to the way to, to match the way you speak a simple thing, but it makes a big difference. And I'm happy to share my screen, but Omar's had a, had his hand up. Just got to meet there. Um, I just want I just want to put in a, a win that I did. So there's a couple of agents here that have lately had open houses. So I actually did a, a small little um, ad based off of an open house. And off of those, I checked. I ended up getting three individuals because I asked them, where did you see uh, the, the property, the MLS and stuff? And it was actually from the Facebook ad. Two of those individuals want to sell and buy. So I think right now, like here in Utah, we're getting a little bit chillier. A lot of agents don't want to do open house and stuff. I take advantage of that and actually put it out there. One on Friday in the evening, one on Saturday. So open house ads, I think it's something that could potentially bring individual if you're willing to do open house, because a lot of agents don't want to do them. Uh, I, I got a good return. I got about uh, the first day, three from the ad, second day, two, not bad. But now I have buyers because they're unrepresented as well. So um, for, for me, that's something that um, I would probably want to uh, see how it's a good way to um, make an ad based off of open houses, especially in these so-called slow time of the year. You know, you could potentially pick up um, people who maybe have an expired um uh, buy a broker agreement with an agent now because they weren't able to find anything in the beginning of the year. Um, so just a, just a point, open house ads probably will work out to bring in some business. If you're willing to do those open houses, close. So. Can I add something on the community thing? Yes. Okay, so um, a lot of you know that I do a lot of community stuff around here. I have an adopt a road event that I do four times a year and I have three roads adopted. And so I have a picture of me with my my son and my stepkids like throwing up leaves in front of one of those signs that say the Renshaw family adopt a road. And I have that as my footer in the email that goes out so that they know that I do take care of my community. So that's just a idea of something that you can do too. Great advice. It's awesome. Ira, I shared the, the, the uh, Facebook permalinks because for some reason, the share screen is available, but I, I can't share my desktop for some reason. It's like, I, it's only allowing me to share files or uh, my computer audio, it's, I don't know. 
Okay. From second I'll pull it yeah, the options are being the options are are strange. So there's the one ad. We can all see that. Yeah. See all available luxury homes in Cumberland County. Get a list of luxury homes Cumberland County sent directly to you. So are you building that in Street Text and then editing it all in Ads Manager, or is it straight from the that, template? That is that's straight template. Yeah. That straight template. Um, yeah, there's nothing custom about that in any way, shape, or form. The image I just uh, was just made in Canva. I'll pull up the other one. And this one was the custom lead ad. So this one, but I, but again, I just, you know, I made it all in street text, but it was just the template that I was working from was the, I think just called custom lead ad. And we have a custom lead ad class that started again with Logan. We've been doing those workshops. So if you want to just kind of bounce off ideas when it comes to custom leads and just get a better understanding of how to use that template, Logan is doing a workshop today. I'm just reloading this. It's Facebook's taking its time. Yeah, anytime you screen share with Facebook, it's on Zoom. It, yeah, it bogs it down. Maybe it help. Oh, there it goes. Hey, Josh, while this is pulling up, question for you on that retargeting ad that you're running, um, does your audience have to be a certain size in order for Facebook to actually uh, distribute that ad to them? Because I've got one where I've got a custom, um, I'm retargeting the, um, the form, the lead form, and Facebook approved it, but no money is being spent. So I'm trying to kind of figure out what's going on with that. Uh, well, technically, you only need one person for it to, you know, be an audience. But yeah, you, you have to have some people in there. Uh, what that number is, I don't know for sure. But the other thing is the objective that you choose for the retargeting. Um, that that will also impact, you know, whether or not the ad showing. So so. Um, we're going down a rabbit hole here, which is, I think, a separate sec, uh, you know, session might make sense for this. But I'm I'm doing an ad that's reach, a, an ad that's brand awareness, and an ad that's video. And I figured between those three, um, you know, that it's going to put it back in front of uh, the right people, um, or in in front of those audiences. So, do you have any idea, like, how many clicks do you have on the lead form? Uh, I've got well over thirty some more clicks so far. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's still very small. What's the, what's the objective that you've chosen for the app? For the retargeting? Yeah. Um, I think it's video view. I'd have to go back because I launched it about a week ago. Yeah. So try, leave that one go and try to use the same concept that, that you can even use the same post, but do it as a reach ad. And then maybe even also as a brand awareness ad. Um, Cause you're giving Facebook more options to put it back in front of the audience because they you know between all of their algorithms and the way they figure things out th those 30 people they may not want to show it because they don't believe that any of those 30 people based upon their algorithm will will watch a through play of the video but the reach one you're just paying facebook to say the reach one is more like a billboard and reach and brand awareness are more like a billboard i want to give you a dollar a day and and you just put that in front of whoever whoever's you know on the highway and in this case this is a terrible analogy but whoever's on the highway is that 30 people right like um so i think you got to play with the different um objectives there it could just be it could just be that gotcha i'll try thanks man appreciate it yeah manual <laughs> i mean my mom usually calls me that <laughs> Um, yo, I hope everyone's having a great day, man. Seriously, I love this group. I'm uh, recruiting a couple people just because uh, the benefits of this program and like this. But here's a couple of my wins. I haven't retargeted or done any new advertisement, but from the leads that I've gotten, it's like 15. I've gotten two listing appointments. Um, just super excited. I mean, like, I think I've only spent 150 bucks. So out of that, but I think the... If we're talking about all this, I spoke with this girl, Liliana, that's part of this street text, and she mentioned videos, videos, videos. So anytime I get like a lead, I'm going to send out a video introducing myself, just letting them know, hey, 
in whatever, you know, I'm like, I'm super high. So like I'm ADHD, you know what I mean? So I'm going to like, just bring that shit right to your face, you know, <laughs> but whatever that is, is like, you're going to connect with the people that, you know what I mean? Like what we're, you're trying to figure out, I think in my opinion is I don't want to work with everybody, but I do want to work with like the super high fast movements because they're going to be able to keep up with me. And that's the thing. It's like, if I have to like lower that, then it becomes a boring transaction for me. And, but that also gives us the opportunity to work with each other and send referrals. But that's kind of like a couple of the things that I've had and a couple of wins I wanted to share in this mastermind. But thank you very much for you guys' support and uh, excited for November. I heard a, a podcast that I love it. Uh, I totally agree. I heard a podcast this week and it really kind of hit me one of the lines in it. The person said on social media, people want to interact and follow with someone who's polarizing. And, and we all try to not be polarizing. We're like, I'm just going to be neutral middle of the road. But I want you to think about it right now for yourself. Like, who are your favorite people on social media? And are they opinionated? Because they probably have an opinion and that opinion is probably slanted towards the way that you think or you act. So we're so always trying to be like middle of the road. I'm not going to make sure I like, I, I don't offend anybody on either side, but actually if you were just you and you just put you out there, then you're going to meet more people that are like you. And we're so afraid to be neutral. When I think about the people that stand out for me on social media or the people that stand out in my circles, it's people that, you know, stand for something. They have, a, there's something about them. There's a character about them. So if you want to stand out instead of blend in, sometimes we have to air more. That's why we like Marcus pushes for like, get people on your personal page because you're going to meet your people and the people that aren't your people, you're just not going to do business with them, but you never were going to do business with them anyways. So I think sometimes there's this like blend in mentality. We're trying so hard not to offend so many people, but at the same time, you're completely missing the opportunity to like meet your people that like freaking love you that are like this person. Like I have people I follow on social media, me and my wife talk about them. Like we know, like, I'll be like, did you see what's her name that she did this today? And she, like, we, they don't know this, but we talk about them. Like we know them. So, you know, just be you. And I love that. You're just you every time you come on these masterminds, which is awesome. So do you guys another way to or to say on piggyback and ira and then i'll uh jump up there with thomas uh is think of it like like leadership vision communication sometimes people are afraid to actually say the direction that they believe things need to go and if they aren't willing to say the direction they need to go that's not leadership and so so leadership on social media leadership in your community is simply sharing the things that you value what are your values how do you like to live do you like to live fast do you like to live you know, like exactly what um, Manuel <laughs> was saying, but you, you, love, you love to go for it, right? And those are your people. Then share that because that's part of leadership is actually communicating the world that you want to see. And yeah, you might ruffle a few feathers, but it's better because the people that see it, that get it, now they have a cause that they can rally behind. They have somebody they can say, yeah, I really like the way you live. I want to be a little bit, I, I want to support that. I had a friend actually just yesterday say to me, he has this crazy idea. He's like, I want to give a book to every single child in our city. And I said, okay. Awesome, and, he, and he said, and then he shared it right away. He's like, cause I know I've got people around me who are going to support that. And it's like, wow, that's cool. That's leadership. And so uh, sometimes you just got to like pick things and go. Uh, Thomas, it's all yours. No, I was just saying. So one thing that would improve <laughs> like automation emails, you know, if it's the buyer lead campaign and it's, you know, here's your list of, all the homes under four hundred thousand dollars. You know, you could have your video embedded into the email, your intro video, and you know, uh, introduce yourself. And like, would anybody ever introduce their family in those videos, just to make them a more real human being? Or is that a bit weird? Maybe a dog. <laughs> a dog? I do have a weird dog. Okay. Or a jeep. <laughs> yeah. Or a dog named G. The sky's a limit. Don't yeah, I got I got no problem with that. My girls yeah. want to show up in the videos all the time. Once, okay. Once once again though, Josh Josh hit it out of the ballpark earlier and he said it. It's gotta be you. If it looks like a stage thing, mechanical, whatever, this and that's like, God, did the people go rent a family or what did they do? So if you're out there 
um, you want to come across the way they're going to meet you and you're really going to be not, not some stage production or something. So, you know, the easiest way is if you're out at an event or something's going on, um, the soccer game, something, and you just have something where they see a moment of you being you and your family's there. So sometimes you say a subliminal message. These are the things they see and observe and they take in and they are not aware that you're really feeding them this because you wanted them to see it, but that's their power of observation. This is where video comes in handy because when you see them watch this thing five or six times, um, on the other side of it though, you worry about getting yourself too spread out there because you're not looking for some stalker to know that, hey, they take their kid to the soccer game and if he ain't there, the kid's alone. So you gotta be mindful always about personal security as well when you're exposing your family to things. I don't show my house where I live. It's not that people couldn't find you, but there's just, you do have to draw lines and limits to some of the things you do and be aware of it because the world isn't a friendly place. Good point, thank you. I have a video that goes out to um, people that, you know, click on our properties on our website, you know, and it's just very general and it's just, you know, I'm introducing myself and, you know, I, and you could do the same with a list, you know, and you could be like, thank you for inquiring about, you know, homes under 500,000 in Henderson. Um, I hope you enjoy, you know, enjoy love. Please let me know. And you just say, you know, you may not be ready yet. Make, make it like, you're not trying to get that first appointment that you're just introducing yourself. And, but when you're ready, I'll be here for you and answer any questions, you know, something simple and quick, do not make a long video. If it's bomb bomb and it says, watch this five minute video, they're not going to watch a five minute video. So I always try to keep it under 60 seconds. So. Well said Wendy, and especially on the first one, you can make those longer as you build that trust, you know, and that drip email goes longer. That's the time you can have those longer videos. But in the beginning, even on that, you know, list of homes with pools in Vegas, right? The idea is they're automatically getting that list. And what you're going to say, if you say anything, and it could be a few days later is, hey, now that you've had time to look at this list, what, it, what are the neighborhoods you're looking for? What are the amenities you're looking for? What's the perfect price point? Tell me, you know, I, what would be the ideal search for you? And I'll come back with you with an updated list. So now you're making it all about them and what they're looking for. So just some ideas on buyer automations because the buyer drip campaigns, right? With those, they don't have a lot of that stuff in there. So you could go in and add a few ideas like that, a few emails. We can talk about that on the automations one. The drip email uh, on the seller side is built out, but even those, as, as you can clearly see, need to be updated. And I have several people, several of you have gone in there and added additional days. I love, I've always loved, Wendy, your uh, day 12, are we Facebook friends yet? <laughs> you know, like that's cool. That's, that's my style. That's why we jive, right? Um, some people won't want to do that, but that's just, you know, that's who we are. And it's not even very attractive. And it's just like, are we Facebook friends yet? <laughs> kind of scary. My assistant was like, seriously, you're going to send that out. But it's, it's just funny, you but, know, and but guess what? That's you. find me and get to know me. They'll realize, you know, but that's my... you, right? That's, but that's who you are. And so back to Leon's point, if it's you, that's you. If you go to my Facebook, you're going to clearly see that I'm not, I'm going to ruffle some feathers. I mean, let's be honest, like, you know, but th that I'm building my tribe and you're building yours. Yeah. Right. So I, I like the idea of putting the video in with the list of properties though. Cause I don't think I have a video on that one. That's, that's good. The intro video. So, yeah, I mean, and, and that's where we can expand upon that and, in the automations class with Ira or the conversion workshop. And, you know, if you guys have ideas, just throw it out there, post those videos in the group and we get immediate feedback from everybody here. Cause that's, that's what we're, we're all about is collaboration. I have a quick question. Um, sorry, let me raise my hand. <laughs> you got it, Joe. Uh, going back to the um, buyer lead ad, when I do a split test on it, um, is it still that each one of those, um, automations that are connected right now, um, 
you have to go in and make individual changes to each automation that's connected to each, each ad. So if you run five ads to split test, you need to go in and make adjustments to each funnel for each one of those ads, correct? It's not like you have like the seller ad where it's one funnel or one automation for all the five different you know, split tests if you do five of them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, who's got that answer? Troy? Because I'm looking at you, I can see you. Or, or John, are we working on making that to where you can edit one and launch them all? Sorry, I didn't catch the question. I was working on it. Me and Troy are, are talking right now on Slack, problem solving on something. And I'm like, neither of us were actually listening. Or Logan, Logan too. Now. The, the answer to the question is we are working on something that will make that a little bit easier moving forward. Um, we've got a couple of really interesting features out. Exactly how it uh, fully plays out, we'll be able to show you guys on Iris Automations class or uh, in my custom ad class as well. We'll be touching on a lot of those same kind of features. and. Um, absolutely, that's something that will be coming in time, the ability to essentially apply an automation structure to other ads rather than have to go through and rebuild the entirety of the automation. Uh, that's something that hopefully, again, we'll, we'll, we'll have handled for you before much longer here. Well, I think the, the strategy right now, Joe, for yourself is do the split test, find the winner, optimize that one. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Uh, so and you have. Oh. Well, go ahead, Ira. So say you have follow up boss. So one of the things like you could do is, um, if you build it out in follow up boss, you can add a tag at the end of the street text automations, and the tag could put them on. Like Linnea Carr has done that at the end of her nine months, added a tag for follow up boss, so that when the nine month campaign is done in street text it pulls them over into a new drip and follow-up boss because it recognizes the tag. So if you build it out and then put a tag associated with it, then you can just add that tag to the end of any automations and street text, and it'll put them on an action plan you have already built out once and follow-up boss for now. You have to, and no, I appreciate that. And I still, that's, that's on my list of, you know, things to do, but also with that, is it something that you have to connect Zapier to in order to zap it? Or is it automated such that when the nine month stops, the, the next one will take over automatically? Or is there some sort of like thing function that needs to happen? Yeah, so if you've done the connection through email parsing, it'll pull the lead over and our system doesn't. So Linnea has it, so it's the, after the nine month drip, the tag goes there. So they're not going to get the tag until they get through the nine month drip. At that point, they'll be pulled over that the tag will be recognized by follow up boss and it should go over to follow up boss. It and should just, Joe, if you have it Joe, set up. I think you may, Joe, I think you still have to manually put them on to that second action plan. If, if you're email parsing, it won't automatically bounce them from the primary action plan that they've run out of to the secondary. Okay. I got you. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff is a master with follow-up. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so as we get to the end of this, I was going to say kudos to the beginning of this for the person that said they tagged their stuff. That's that's like really powerful to get in there. But, um, you know, I, I get people sending me stuff, ask me questions. Here's one I throw out. We always say the nugget for the day. Um, you know, we're talking about new leads coming in. What are you doing for your old? I started to send something last week before I went to Vegas and I thought, nah, I don't want to answer phones or texts. I've got um, the winter tips going out uh, this week. I'm going to send it out tomorrow. So it starts blasting on Friday and it's just something, go find it online. I went and found like I'm in Washington state. So I got the Washington state energy guides and stuff like that. And I'm laughing because the memory I had last year was some guy came back to me with it. It's a buyer lead goes, well, why do I want to do this? I don't own the house. And I go, God, and I sent back some, so well, God, can I move in with you? You mean your landlord pays your light bill? And the guy goes, laugh out loud, point well taken. So if you're looking for stuff to send out, um, professionally done, good tips, it, it's nothing but a link. Go ahead and say, hey, that time of year is coming, you know, and boom, send it. But, you know, reach out to the folks I already have. We always can get new leads. But like I said, why do I need more leads if I'm not working the old ones? So 
just just something for you guys if you're searching for something we're hitting that time of year from the time i left last week to come back here it's truly fall here in the in the i came home to yard full of leaves so if you're looking for something to do and you're bored send it out great tip we keep going guys this is the this is for you so ask questions what do you so doing? i got a yeah, this is, this is so good. So I got an analogy. I've been thinking about this. So I've been reading this book by this guy called Tom Morimoto. He's awesome. It's just such a, such an interesting story. He, he, the guy he's, he's born like early 1900s, lives his life, uh, goes to world war II, spends five years in the army, comes out, uh, gets his, uh, goes to university, get, becomes a, a process engineer, because each, each year he's in the army, he pays for a year of schooling. Otherwise, he never would have been able to afford to go to university. Out of that, ends up like in a crazy career working in uh, everywhere from like Venezuela, Dubai, uh, Alberta, Houston, you name it. And uh, like it becomes buddies with one of the sheiks and of Dubai. And there's like four brothers there. And then he gets invited to uh, the UK where he goes to the like one of the big horse races where the, the queen comes in in her chariot and he gets to know, like, it's just like, it's a true story, but it's nuts. And as I'm, as I'm reading, like listening to the story, I'm, I'm thinking about like how the, the business of, of, um, of essentially oil or mining or gas and all that stuff, it's so similar in some ways to, to real estate in this sense. First, you identify like, like where you want to, where you want to find the gas or the oil. And you, you basically, you, you, you say, okay, this is the location. It's kind of like, this is Facebook. This is where all of the oil is. This, we know that it's there. That, like, how, do I, how do I drill there? Like, what's, what's my opportunity? And then you figure out what your lead channel is. And so uh, the leads is like the oil the pipeline. But once you've got that going, now it's like your business is set. You just have to focus on what's the processing look like, the systems processing, all that other stuff. And, and so once you've set up your systems, now you have a business that can really grow, but the key is you got to have that pipeline. You got to have that pipeline where you know that you've tapped into the source. And the more I think about this, the more I'm like, this is really such a good analogy because once you figure it out, you've got your pipeline and you've got your systems and, and it's just really simple, simple matter of just making sure that those systems are operating and working well, you can start to get more and more efficient What's the language I'm using to introduce? How am I connecting? Have I got systems? Eventually you get to the Jankies level where you got ISAs, you got people, you got your ops team working and managing all that stuff. But it doesn't have to be that hard at the beginning. At the very beginning, it's really simple. And the other key is if you think about it, everybody really is like your sphere, your friends on Facebook, they are already in your nurturing list, so to speak. Facebook is a way to nurture them no different than any other um, than any other uh, uh, medium. And so the, what you're doing is you're essentially, you're bringing more and more people into the pipeline and you're increasing the number of people at any given month who are gonna be ready to buy or sell. And ultimately one is you wanna have a pipeline where you have so many people that are ready to buy and sell, you've hit your dream business. Whatever your vision was for your business that you've hit that, okay, I wanted to do, let's say it's, um 60 60 listings a year maybe that was your goal maybe you wanted to double that 120 maybe you want to you got a you know a bigger dream and you want 50 agents under you it doesn't really matter what what matters is that you you've, you've scaled that to the point where you're like okay i know that every month on average this is the number of people who are ready to buy and sell today they're in my pipeline i know where they're coming from and then it's just now you've got a system that's scaled and once you've connected all the dots like you're doing what linnea is doing you're doing what um wendy's doing you're doing what you know everybody it, but they didn't start there even like leon like ask Leon. like leon did not start there like he was one of the guys who you uh you would really remind everybody keep it simple start keep it simple do one thing figure out the one thing that you can do this week like right now that idea is a great one send an email send something to your to your existing prospects just remind them what you're doing if, if i were i would send the email that that wendy shared today i'd send that to everybody in your database send that email and just see what happens um because you not, already not all have at one people, time not all at one time but you already have people who are in your list today who are ready to buy or sell this month and they actually need you they need you for them uh so it's they're the right fit they're the right person 
They got good mindset. They're going to be pleasant and pleasure to work with. And so just go and identify who that person is simply by sending that email and connecting with them. And, uh, and you're off to the races. What you have to remember is you've been nurturing these guys for a long time. And everybody in here always says, well, I'm in it for the long game. Okay, I hear your short game, but you're not telling me what you're doing to keep the long game working. And that's why I say, even if it's just once a month, you don't want to over spam them because the worst thing that happens if someone unsubscribes, it's hard to get them back. Earlier, like Maria was saying, she's had an uptick in activity in her MLS stuff for putting all the buyer and seller leads in there. And I've been doing that for a while, but I wound up getting unsubscribes. Or the other thing is like in my MLS, if they go a long period of time and they don't engage with the thing, it automatically takes them out. And I say the hardest thing to do is get back somebody that's unsubscribed. So you, you know, what works in Washington might not work in Arizona or work in Texas, but you know, you just, where you're at, you got to look at what you're doing and make sure what you're doing is effective for the area you're at. And so, you know, I always say, don't neglect the ones you have. You, you paid for these leads, they're in there, they're nurturing. If you're playing a long game, it's gonna be a very short game in your long game if you're not sending the guys and gals in at anything. So, you know, we, we get busy, but don't be neglectful of what you already have. You're sitting on a gold mine for a reason, but it doesn't do no good if you don't go in and mine for the gold. Yeah, you got you got a mind for the gold, and at the same time, there's there's a there's a natural, like re, like relationships aren't built in a second. Relationships are built over time, and so when you're nurturing, like Ira was saying, people actually get to know you just by seeing you consistently. They see you on Facebook, they see your newsletter, they see you on Facebook, they see your ads that are running. They get to know you by seeing you consistently. At some point, they're going to want to be ready to work with you. And that's when you know that you've, you've spent the time, you've, you've nurtured the seeds, you've done everything you need. You need to follow up with your old prospects because most of your low hanging fruit is in your old prospects. Most like that's where the people are actually most ready to, to work with you today. And cause you've done all the work. Sometimes we actually end up like, I love that analogy. Iris says we plant the seeds and then we start digging up the seeds. Like we literally, we'll start, we start going too hard for people who are just captured. Now on the buyer side, it's a little different. So on the buyer side, you obviously, you want to get a contact conversation with them really early, like within that first week or two, just to optimize that list that you're sending them. So they know that they're getting something that's direct value. On the home value side, you really want to basically, you want to warm that person up. There's always going to be somebody in there who's ready to sell today but they're going to be fewer. And, and Wendy, you said uh, two weeks ago, you said, it's not magic. You just need to be there when they're ready. And the only way you can be there when they're ready is by being consistent because someone's going to be ready right now. Someone's going to be ready tomorrow. Someone's going to be ready next week. And you just want to make sure you're there when they're ready. So you're there to have a conversation with them. And uh, so, yeah, so relationships are, are built over time. But you are doing a really good job just by staying consistent with them. And so, so remember that and know that and know that as you're like, yeah, every, every week, uh, the amount of value that, yeah, shared in this, this, even this mastermind today, amazing, incredible. But like, just know that as you're, you're, you're going, you're getting better, your skills are improving. And so don't ever base your benchmark based on what last year looked like, base your benchmark on where you're at today and you're better today than you were last year does that make sense so like your your potential if you go to the gym and you can lift 100 pounds let's say last year but you kept going to the gym consistently now you're gonna be like benching 200 pounds or if you're like marcus 5,000 pounds and you know you're gonna you're gonna just like you're gonna you're gonna ramp up so you want to base your potential based on what you're at today and know that like the people that you generated a year ago you're coming at for totally different than you were a year ago so go back to them, go back to those same people, call them up, find out what they're doing, how things are going in their life. Are they still, did they have a chance to buy or sell? Did something change? Did they end up getting the job that they were looking for, the transfer, you name it, follow up with them. And, uh, and you're going to, you'll be surprised by how much has changed. I love Not that. with them, but with you. I love that, John. 
with all these leads, if you get a chance to profile them on Facebook, grab that link, that profile link, put it in your notes section so it reminds you to check back then. Because you're, you're doing everything you can to humanize the process for them, but what are you doing to humanize the process for yourself? Yes. And how are you looking at this person as more than a lead and some details and an address? If you're not seeing them as a human being with a family and interests and likes and all that stuff, how are they supposed to see you the same? And just your consistent persistence shows the lead who you are in this business. Like if you just keep not, you keep showing up, they're like, oh, this is somebody I want to work with. Cause this is somebody who's going to represent me well. So we often are like, Oh, I'm bugging them. Oh, I'm bugging them. They're busy people. They might not even notice that you've bugged them. <laughs> like they haven't seen a lot of your stuff yet. But if they're like, this person's persistent, like this person's consistent, this is somebody who is like owning their business. This is somebody who is like showing up in their community. Like I was just, I know some of you have talked about Craig Proctor. I was just messaging him. He's a huge real estate coach where I grew up, even as a kid, I know who he is. Like as a kid, I knew who he was because he was just everywhere. Like he was just, I couldn't escape him. And now I'm like here working for street tax years later and I'm running across people that know him all across North America. But as a kid, I knew who he was just because he was, he was everywhere. He was in everything. So it's just like, be consistently persistent. Like it just, people are going to recognize that you're somebody who means business and you, you do this all day, every day. And that's somebody they're going to want to work with. They're not going to want to work with the person that doesn't consistently follow up with them. So don't worry about bugging them. You mean I have to actually put in real work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently, like Josh said earlier, like if every seventh lead came in and was a deal, we'd all be in real estate, right? And we like, is that easy? I can just get seven Facebook leads and list homes like next week. I don't have to do like Wendy and put my face on everything and do magnets and all we, and Halloween candies M &M. and business cards and Facebook ads. <laughs> and you can follow up with email. I know Donna Swansea, she still only uses email. She still follows up by email and she's done. I, I haven't count. We've stopped counting after two something, the transactions to street text, which is crazy. And she only uses email. So there are, you don't have to like, remember that you can find the approach that you love. And the key is fall in love with an approach and you'll keep doing it. And so consistency is the name of the game. And uh, <laughs> I had another thought and it's gone. <laughs> I have a question. I don't know if anybody here has Facebook groups, but I created a Facebook group for Home and Henderson. And I got a lot of agents wanting to join my group. And I'm just... I'm not one of those people that I wouldn't, I, add them. I wouldn't add I them. have all the business, you know, yeah, you, worry, I mean, you worry about them poaching sunny, sunny and bend was, was one of the best groups from one of the other people. In yeah, our, I love that. In our I love that. that does that. So and, and, yeah. And the thing is, is like, I know there's plenty of business to go around. I know there's 19,500 of us to split it. Um, but you know, it was my group. I created it so I could be in front of them and now they're on there posting their listings. So I don't know, is that, should I not let them in or should yeah, I? I wouldn't let them in. Make, go make a realtor group for Nevada yeah. if they want to get in and share ideas, but you're, you're doing what you're doing. Put it like this. The focus of anything you do is what your end result supposed to be. Why did you create the group? for that for Facebook what what is the purpose who are you looking to reach out to well I was going to you know I share stuff about the community as far as good eats and uh events and you know and try to get you know people to come together and you know post things that they're selling stuff like that but yeah I started getting realtors and I'm just like shit and I don't want to be a bitch and say sorry no you can't be part of my group even though you live in Henderson so I don't know. Well, the, the, the whole purpose behind that when you created that was informational source for the community and you don't have anything going on that um, the rest of the uh, realtors can't access. 
So keep it where it is. Your focus was on the people there, not the realtors. What do they? What do we teach other realtors? Go on Facebook, go join groups, go this, go that. They're looking to come in and find the clients that you've driven there. So don't do it. I wouldn't. And then the other thing today, easy thing for this, you know, reach out, challenge yourself. Three contacts a day, just three. That, that If you reach out and do three a day, 90 a month, 90 a month, a thousand touches by the end of the year. This business is touch-based. When you look at this guy that you go, he's a freaking nerd. I'd never work with him. He's an ass, this and that. Um, we know that, but the people he talked to doesn't. So what at the end of the day, you got to remember is this. That was a person that sat down. I got to take my hat off to them because they put that seven to 12 touches in. They got that person. You might be the, the, the most kick-ass realtor on the planet, but they don't know that. And they're not going to know that if you don't put the touches out to them. So what you do is three a day, one in the morning, one at noon, one at night. It don't matter. A thousand touches in a month. That's how you, their business went up. Make yours go up. So second question, can they see if you remove them from the group? <laughs> who cares? Yeah, who that cares? They won't come back. Them. I do. I don't want Wendy, to. Wendy, just questions. make your assistant an admin and let her remove them. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Wendy? You know the words. This is not a, I'm not here to hurt your feelings business. Let them go out and create their own group. Now, now here's what's funny. Some will join a group just so they can come pirate your stuff and do the same thing. Because the easiest thing we have in this business to do is copy what other people do to save us the time and effort. It's like, oh, that's a great idea. We piggyback all the time. That's what they do. So let them yeah. go create their own group. Stick to the script, service who you service. They'll get over it or they'll figure it out on their own or someone else will let them come steal their clients. Yeah, you can you can create, say, like your core values and maybe one of them and say, if you want to join this group, no soliciting. And then if you see <laughs> people coming in there soliciting other like as agents, you can just say, sorry, you broke the terms. And then it's really black and white and it doesn't feel weird um, because it's a relationship business as well with the people because you're ultimately like at some point, you're probably going to work with the agents. And so you don't want to be burning bridges that way either. And uh, and so I think like, as long as you're 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 really clear, like this is the standard of the group, and we want to keep it black and white, that will that will be good. The uh, and that's like there is more than enough for everybody. Remember that. Like I'm in my community group uh, for my neighborhood, and there's a few different agents who happen to live in our neighborhood. And there's one agent who started the group. It turns out I didn't know that, but you can always tell when she's posting. Because it's it's really like like she's it's it's community oriented. Hey everyone, we're organizing a block um, garage sale. Everybody's in all that kind of stuff. And then you can tell one the other one, one of the other guys posted because it's always like an ask, and it doesn't nobody ever responds to his posts. And so uh, I, I think like you can tell who's got the listings. And uh, so when you when you have a group and you make it about the community or you make it about the purpose of the group, everybody is they're looking there anyways. Then that's why they joined the group in the first place. And so, but if you if you have to if you have people that are soliciting and you you know you say like, hey, this is the terms of the group. Well, and that and the thing is, is, I can't say no soliciting because I encourage that because I want to help small businesses. So I want them to say their specials and, you know, uh, we have like a mobile meet man that's on a different corner every day, you know, so I want him to be able to post about that because that's driving people to him. So like, I'm trying to help people. So I can't really say no soliciting, no soliciting if you're a realtor, maybe. Yeah. Hey, Wendy, I got a, so I got a couple of groups. And one thing I do is I have a list of rules and a questionnaire that everybody has to fill out at the beginning. One of the questions I ask specifically is, are you a realtor? And it's amazing. I don't have, I've only had a few realtors um, actually request to join. Because I think when they see that question, they go, oh, <laughs> and it makes them think, am I going to be accepted or not? And they move on. Um, wow. The other, my, my one exception is I will invite realtors from out of state and, or I will actively seek them out. So I will find somebody whose business is similar to mine out of state or out of country, and I will actively seek them out and get them to join my group to see if I can get referral business from outside of the state. And I have no problem with that. And I think that's a big win. Okay, that's a good idea. I like the realtor question. I mean, and even though I look to see everybody that wants to join and see what they do, but I was, I didn't even know, it just started happening. And I'm like, shit, they already know. 
the fact that you have a Facebook group, though, Wendy, in it itself is a massive accomplishment. Yeah, massive. And so at that, like anybody could should, you know, as a social influencer, because that's who you are, you're, you know, you know, in real estate, you're a social media influencer. Um, to do that, that's, that's next level. So anybody should to aspire to do that if they're really wanting to cultivate community within their area. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, guys. So, so I have a I have a question. I'm new here, and I like the um, the question that you said that you invite the realtors from out of state. How do you do that in Facebook? I mean, how do you, how do you reach out to them? Is it just um, through Messenger, or how does that yeah. work? So on the group, when you're up, when you log, when you're in your Facebook group up top, it'll be a list of your members have images like pictures. And then beside that, it'll say invite. So once I know who I want to invite, I just click on that invite button and I send them an invite. And, or a lot of times I'll text and call them in, in advance and start a dialogue with them. Okay. Right? And then we build a little bit of a relationship. And if I see there's genuine interest, um, I definitely invite them. Okay. You, also like, you can also like their page yeah. and then go in there like that. So like for me, I have a lot of military stuff I do. So earlier this year, I had one of my people build me a, almost a thousand pages for relocation pages, strictly military. And by virtue of that, I go into the areas that those bases are at, find other realtors there and I like their page. And then they come in and see mine and like it back. There, It's no mistake, I got an airplane behind me. The minute they look at it, they're like, oh, military, boom, they're on it. Like-minded people that talk the same language, it's, it's, it's a niche. Today was a niche day in here. There were, there was at least four different niches that got hit in here that were simple, that would fit almost everybody. And so it's, it's like, you know, you create that market, you know where to go. And so when you're Facebook looking, go find people, um, yeah, doing the same things or the same mindset in the areas that, you know, you have people coming from. In addition to the military, I went and found the 25 most popular retirement areas. And funnily, Seattle ain't one of them. But people leave here to go it ain't just arizona it ain't just new mexico so i went had pages built relocating too because if they're leaving here they're going to sell a house and then the business mindset is i want a referral on the other side so i always say the biggest investment but the best one is just your time go do it it doesn't cost you no money so just go do it that's that's so good um i i think uh you really good job uh Levina. Sneaking in that question just before we end it, but um, just want to say thank you, appreciate you all. Really, um, really honored just to even hang out with, with you all. Like constantly, just learning and and growing. And you know, I think as well, just having that like when you have that growth mentality, you're so focused on where you're going that you you don't even have time to look at what other people are doing. You're just like, hey, other than just to learn, other than to come with like-minded people, where you're just encouraging one another to go and step further, step out. And just know that you're doing a really good job. Like Wendy, way to go have Facebook community crushing it. Go out there and, and just keep playing to your strengths. And uh, yeah, you you are you were made for this. You're born for this. You're in your sweet spot. And uh, I just feel like you can't help but be blessed in it. So go and and yeah, have a great week. You know, one thing to say to that, Jonathan, though, not only do you sit there and play the strengths, work on building your weaknesses you're always on you know how do you improve yourself if you don't work on improving yourself if you know you're weak in an area work on it people are afraid to get in front of the camera this this the real estate is a video business at one point or another you're gonna have to get in front of them anyway you're gonna meet them so if you camera shy that's okay i'm not gonna say oh get over it but work on it if you know it identify the weakness work on it you do not you know marcus and his thousand reps at the gym he didn't start there so hey, you know do you one thing a, do one thing a day that scares you i love that there we go and if you don't like it delegate it and that is the key to accelerated growth you know what if if you're not a super organized person find somebody who you can hire as an admin who's super organized and go crush it i think the true success comes down to when you figure out the one thing that you're the best at stay there drive that and then leverage out and delegate out anything that you you know, is a waste of time. I mean, and it, you could, you know, you could spend hours upon hours on YouTube trying to be, you know, 
and myself and my and my my life like trying to fix something i'm like heck no I'll, I'll i'll go hire that out right now as an expert and that's the same mentality you need to have at the at the end of the day is if it's not driving you into your passion you probably need to stay away from it one thing one takeaway from this mastermind that i know there's always a like hundred but just take one apply it we'll see you next week thanks everybody